It's the Black Real Estate Dialogue. Tune in. Tune in. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for coming to another Bread Investing Community session. Very excited about our guest tonight and our teacher tonight, Austin Smith. Austin, pre appreciate you coming uh, coming by tonight um, and, and feel free to jump right into it. Yeah, all love. Uh, like you said, Austin Smith here, aka More Than an Agent, hailing from New Jersey, and specifically in Newark, which is the biggest city in New Jersey which gets a lot of uh, investment attention, just being 20 minutes, 25 minutes outside of the city in which uh, not everywhere is developed, but obviously definitely on the upward trajectory as we, we continue on with everything that's going on in the market. Quit my job to jump into real estate full time, never look back, currently an agent. Um, and that's the primary job and I invest on the side. And at that particular case, my wife and I, we own 16 units in both New Jersey and Cleveland, and hopefully looking to expand over in LA. So we're praying that everything goes well with that particular deal. But this is my passion and, I, and I'm just here to provide value and actionable steps that people can take to match their own particular goals. Uh, because I feel like for the, most time, for the most part, we usually give black and white advice and that doesn't appeal or that that's not necessarily tailored to everybody's specific goals where they are and, and where they're going. Um, so that's why we always wanna make sure to, to provide a, a, a broad spectrum of, of ideas and, and action items so that way individuals can take those specific gems and apply it to you know, what's going on in their specific business, whether they're on the 100th unit or whether they're just starting off with, with their first property. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. And um, you know, enough about me, but we're gonna go into what we're here for, which in this case, partnerships. Partnerships 101, right? I'm gonna make this so easy for you. I'm gonna give you enough gems to go and take back to your respective communities. So that way we're all building, we're all moving forward. First things first, stop trying to do everything on your own. Stop it. Like I get it. It might be an ego thing for guys. Maybe you might not have everything, but I want you to know that there's always somebody out there who has exactly what you lack. And I know like in the books and everything, like all the professional development books and all the business books, they always go into these grand examples. Like when Michael Jordan was such and such, and it's like, no one wants to be Michael Jordan. I just want to be me. I just want to work with where I'm going right, right now. We want to keep on building, but no one wanted to like, no one said that I wanted to be Michael Jordan, but they always give these grand examples. Um, but what I will say is that it's, it's a team perspective. And there's a reason why teams win championships. I don't care who's the star player. I don't care who, you know, is the, is the sixth man on the, on the, you know, coming off the bench, whatever the case, the reality is there are teams that are tackling these, these major goals of winning a championship. We're not here to win the championship. We're just here to push the bar forward. And obviously, you know, championship mentality, it, it'll all revert back into what we're doing as a team. And I can't stress that enough because majority of the people that want to do deals, either their first deal or their next deal, usually you're trying to go it after it alone. And eventually you're gonna hit a ceiling. You might not hit that ceiling on the first property, but if your goal is to scale and to continue to build, you will eventually hit a ceiling in which you are going to need a team, right? So I wanna put that into perspective because everybody tries to do something or everybody tries to do things on their own. I don't have enough money. I don't have good enough credit. And it becomes an I, 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 instead of, do we have enough money? Do we have the credit, right? So in business, whether you're selling a product, whether you're selling a service, whether you're, um, uh, even if you're an employee, you're always going to be part of a team. And when it comes time for you to voice your opinion or move the ball forward, people are going to do business with who they know, like, and trust. We know that. But the partnerships are no different. 
If you're in your own respective field um, uh, as an employee for someone who has a nine to five, which we, which on the sidebar, we got to stop like shaming nine to fives because it's aren't like, that's another story. But if you're in the boardroom and you're part of the marketing team, right? If you're trying to push the agenda forward, which the main agenda for the company forward, people are going to have a harder time trusting you and going off with your word, putting your ideas into practice if you haven't proven yourself. If you haven't come to the table with the opportunity to show your expertise and things like that, people are not going to take you serious. They're going to keep you in the process-based task of your job, of your business, of your service, unless you are able to actively demonstrate the creative aspect to push things forward. And partnerships are absolutely no different, all right? So real estate, let's talk about it, let's get into it. The four things, the four things, and Sam, just give me a nod just so I know that my screens are, are showing up. The four things that you need to buy any property is money, credit, a good deal, and experience slash reputation. For one to four units, you need the first three, money, credit, and a good deal, right? For anything five units and above, when you're going into the commercial territory, experience is going to pay a factor because usually the uh, properties that are five units and above, the 20 units, the 40 units, the banks are loaning a lot more money and they want to be able to rely on your experience or your reputation. And, I, and, I, and let me back up. I want to say experience. The reputation aspect of it is, excuse me, for someone to even want to partner with you to begin with. And I can't stress that enough. But Austin, what about this 0% down, like, you know, where I don't need any money and so on and so forth? That might be true. And, and we're not knocking that. So that will also depend on what type of loan that you're going after. But there's too many, there's too many of the, and it makes sense because this is what hooks people, the no cash, no credit. You don't need any cash. You don't need any credit. But you realize how they're talking about you and it's always you. You don't need, here's how you can do this without any money out of your pocket, without any credit. You, 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 you. But it's never about here's what you and your team can do if you don't have any money or if you don't have any credit. Right. So the four things that you need in for any particular real estate deal, whether you're putting zero percent down, whether you're doing 20 percent down, you're going to need money. You're going to need credit, a good deal and the experience. And I only say money because everybody uh, you can go after the zero percent down. You can go after the low down payment options. Absolutely. But eventually there will be a time, especially if you're scaling, where you are going to need money. Like we, we, like you are going to need money. So it's, it's a great starter mentality to get the ball rolling, but it won't take you very far. There's not many lenders, especially on the bigger deals that are just going to look and be like, okay, you know, you don't have to bring any money to the table. All right. So I want to make that especially like, like very, very expressive that these are the four things that you need. Here's the thing, and, and it's weird because like you catch me saying it too, right? Like you don't need any cash, you don't need any credit. And here I am like, here's the four things that you need in order to purchase any particular property. You do not have to have all four. Your team does, but you do not have to have all four. So you might not have, the, I mean, you might not have the money, but you got the credit. You might not have the money or the credit, but you found a good deal. You might not have the money, the credit, or the good deal, but you have experience in which you're able to partner with people who are bringing the credit, the money, and a good deal. And we'll go into partnerships in a little bit. But going back to the championship team mentality, you have to have a point guard. If you're playing basketball, basketball heads, we're going to rock with that. Point guard can't win it by itself, right? So that's the money. The two guard can't do it, which is the credit. The three, the four, obviously, and obviously you have, you have a center, but, you know, for the purposes of it, you can't do it alone. You have to do it with a team. So let's go into 
the four common types of partnerships. And all of these forms of partnerships all deal with some form of not having one of those four um, concepts that you need in order to take down any particular deal. And again, just to reiterate, the first three, money, credit, and a good deal, are for the one to four units. And then you will have to add the experience for five units and above on the commercial end, because you can have all three. You can have amazing credit. You can have an amazing deal. You can have $400,000 in the bank. But if you don't have the experience, they're not gonna lend to you. And that's just the reality. Again, five units and up, and you're talking about commercial, commercial waters. So let's get into these four types of partnerships. We'll start with the credit partner because this is how I closed my most recent deal. A credit partner is strictly someone who you are using in order, at least their credit profile, their credit profile, their financial profile in order to help you close on the deal. Simply put, a co-signer. But I wanna, I wanna get us into the framework of saying credit partner because most of the time we take co-signer and we just think of our mom or our dad or our cousin or our sister just to help us co-sign on a loan, you know, so on and so forth. And usually we're thinking about that for like our single family home where we don't have enough and we're just looking for a co-signer. Credit partner comes into play when you're actually looking to take on a property in a business mindset, AKA multifamily, in which you have an asset that's going to pay. So let's go into a credit partner. I had this, um, uh, so here we go. Here's what I did have. I had the money. I had, I also had the credit and which will, which will tell you why I needed the credit partner. I had the money, I had the credit and I had an amazing deal. But here's what happened. Banks will look at um, your financial debt to income ratio. And I wanna split it because FHA, conventional, those loans are tailored towards your personal name. You're not putting this in LLC, this is attached to your personal name. So because it's attached to your personal name, they're gonna look at your personal debt to income ratio. Hi everyone, Sam here from Black Real Estate Dialogue. Make sure to hit that notification bell and that subscribe button and to visit us at blackrealestatedialogue.com.